This is the Mind Your Business Podcast, episode number three. Today, we're talking all about outsourcing, the big mistakes people make, and how to avoid them. So, stay tuned. Hi, I'm James Wedmore, and I've built a seven-figure internet business that offers the financial freedom to do what I want, when I want. And I'm the first to say that hard work and hustle are not essential ingredients for your success. So how do you build a thriving business from the inside out? This is the Mind Your Business podcast featuring myself and co-host Phoebe Morocek. Hello, I'm James Wedmore, your host of the Mind Your Business podcast, and I'm here with the one and only Phoebe Morocek. And welcome to episode number three, seven tips for failing miserably at outsourcing. I love this one. I think this is a topic people are really going to love because you have built your business through outsourcing to people. And these are seven tips to fail miserably, which (laughs) (laughs) I think a lot of people, I know I can relate to a lot of these. This is a little reverse psychology. This is what (laughs) not to do. What we see that most people end up doing. So hopefully we can kind of just shine a light at some of that. So a little bit of backstory about before we get into it. First of all, in our previous episode, when we talked about the shift that it took for me to get to seven figures, outsourcing kind of came up organically as something that was like, wow, that was a big thing. And not just outsourcing overseas, but delegating leverage and, you know, not being the only person in your business that's doing, wearing all the hats and doing all this type of stuff. So the first thing we, we do want to say is we kind of play with you in this episode of poking fun at all the big mistakes that we make at outsourcing. I've made just about all of these. I, I I'm sure I pretty have, I don't, I don't make most of them anymore, but I have at one point in time, but a lot of my students and customers have vented some sort of complaint and it usually falls into one of these seven mistakes. So the first thing I want to say before we get into it is that we think both of us, Phoebe and I are on the same page when we say that outsourcing is absolutely essential without a doubt. And we'll say outsourcing, even though, again, it could mean hiring someone like we hire locally. I have a whole team in the United States today because of outsourcing, by the way. But when I got started, it was me and one virtual assistant that I paid $70 a week while I was living in my parents' basement. And he and I ran the business and got it to where it is. And he's still with us. And he's still with us. Which is pretty incredible. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. It really is. So it's absolutely essential. Stop trying to do it all yourself. And let's learn how to do this right. So what is number one? So number one, I know is something that I definitely struggle and struggled with. Assume that no one will ever do it as well as you. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, it sounds a little silly when we say it. Yes. If you want to fail miserably of outsourcing, just keep continuing to convince yourself that no one's ever going to do it as well as you. They're not going to do it as quickly as you, as fast as you, and it's not going to be as perfect as you. And the simple fact is, is that's just not true. It's not true. Well, and a lot of things that you think you do well, you you might not enjoy. And so if you think, yeah, you might do it well, but if you don't enjoy it, somebody else might do it better or they might enjoy it more. Yeah. And it also goes into what we created the distinction of in our previous episode about the four categories of activities in your business, the $10 an hour, the $100 an hour, $1,000 and $10,000 activities. And the thing is, is you might think that you're the best in the world at doing it, but then you have to ask the really hard, tough question, which is, is this a $1,000 an hour activity or is this like a $10 an hour activity? So like, for example, like creating custom thumbnails for my YouTube videos, (laughs) like, okay, maybe I do them really well, but that's a $10 an hour activity. Should I be doing it? No. And is it okay If it's not perfect, yes, because every time someone else does that thumbnail for me, it frees up 30 minutes to an hour of my time. Of your time and just mental space, you know, when you're not doing it. I know I just, when I was doing all the RMI blog posts, even though it doesn't take much time, just remembering to do it every week takes up so much time mental space. Yes. So. Yeah. And let's talk about that because it's not just about time here. Everyone's like, oh, save time and, mm-hmm. you know, time management. There's a whole other thing to me that is more valuable. So my dad always raised me. I got this, you know, quote or whatever of his like running through my brain all the time. It says time is money. Time mm-hmm. is money. And I agree with that. But there's something that, that I believe is more valuable than your time. And that's your energy, your energy, because there are certain things that will just drain you. And they only took 20 minutes of your time. You know, there's a whole concept of context switching, which we talk about in another episode where switching from one project to the next, like it lags time, but it's also draining your energy as you're trying to figure out, okay, what, what is it that I'm 
doing here and what was I, where did I leave off and all that type mm-hmm. of stuff. But the great analogy that I give is it really stems from this concept, you know, Albert Einstein can talk more to you about this, but the time is relative. And the great example is like, okay, let's say you have a trainer, Phoebe, and I'm your trainer. I'm your trainer at the gym. Okay. And so I say, all right, here's what I want you to do. I'm going to have you stack a ton of weight on a barbell, put that on your shoulder. And I want you to drop into a deep squat. So you're like all the way down in a total squat. Like you're sitting on a chair without a chair there. Right. And you've got like 150 pounds of weight on you. And I want you to hold that for 30 seconds. Now, if you could actually make it through that 30 seconds, that's gonna be the longest 30 seconds of your life. (laughs) I mean, just painful 30 seconds. Now, if I say, I want you to go like get a massage or a makeover or go to Disneyland, like the whole day feels like 30 seconds. Time is relative. One of those activities was draining your energy. And then the other one was like fulfilling you. It was fun. It was light. It was easy. It was exciting. It was new. It was refreshing. And so even if it's only 20 minutes or five minutes, if it's draining your energy, it's a more valuable commodity. So we want to get that across to you that that's really important. Okay. What's number two? So remember, these are what not to do or what to do if you want to fail miserably. (laughs) So give up if you've had or know someone who's had a bad experience with outsourcing. Outsourcing doesn't work. Really? Why? Oh, my friend did it and (laughs) it doesn't work. (laughs) Look around at any business that is successful. Is it just one guy or one gal? Did they do it all themselves? Like look at a restaurant. How many people does it take to run a restaurant? There are at least five servers. There's a host hostess. There's a couple of bus boys. And then there's a whole staff of people in the back in the kitchen, let alone a manager. You think you run a restaurant by one person by themselves? I want to see that happen. Yeah, I think people and entrepreneurs specifically like to know that they can do everything. And so I think, yeah. you know, it's one of these, oh, and, and I do this because it's all that, that whole concept of being busy. Mm-hmm. And what are you? Oh, how, hi, how are you? Oh, I'm busy. You know, oh, I'm so busy building yeah. my business. <laughs> right. Like, wow, look at you. Yeah, I'm so exactly. proud of you and <laughs> how busy you keep yourself. <laughs> Let me so, give you this. I got this medal, this trophy for the you. Busy medal. The trophy. <laughs> busy trophy. But we want to kind of poke fun at it because I want to get you guys to question the model of, that people subscribe to, which is let me just work harder and longer and then I'll be more successful. And outsourcing makes things a little bit easier mm-hmm. for us. So, yes, if you've had a bad experience and now you've got the lens of outsourcing doesn't work, I'm going to challenge you and throw it right back into your face and say, you don't work. Oh, someone just got really like, (laughs) screw you. You're what is broken about this, not the outsourcing, not this concept of outsourcing because everyone else is doing it. So if you tried it and it didn't work and you're going around saying it doesn't work, it's you. There's something there to to change within the way you're approaching it. And that's really what we want to get across. In fact, number five, I think is going to be a huge breakthrough for a lot of people Mm -hmm. because that's kind of one of the the backbones to making this all work. But what we want to say here is don't limit yourself or make this huge assumption that, oh, it doesn't work or all the good ones have already been snagged Mm -hmm. up. And because that's, you know, that's what I get to. And it kind of frustrates me. I don't know why it triggers me, but that like when people find out my team, they're always asking about them like, oh, hey, is he free for a little bit of hours or, oh, hey, can I use this person? Because it's like, oh, I did all the work right. to the, create the process, the structure and whatever. And now you're just going to go take them, which the, the reason that's frustrating is it's not because I've done the work. It's that because I know that they're still going to have a bad experience with that person. I've had my VAs work with other people and come back and say, OK, you're a better boss mm-hmm. and we have more success when we work together. So it's like, it's not about, Oh, I'm just going to steal a guy. I know has a good track record. This VA has a good, is a good employee and I'm just going to steal them and they're going to do all this magic for me. Like, no, there's, it doesn't work like that. It doesn't (laughs) work like that. And you'll find out why in a minute. So Mm -hmm. what's what, let's take a look at number three, which is big one. All right. So hire fast. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> always, <laughs> always hire fast. If you want first person, if you want to <laughs> fail the first person you see, I mean, you know, if you like their picture, just go for it. Just say yes and bring them on board. <laughs> so this is something that, yes, you know, the hire slow and fire fast is really the, the mantra there. And the same holds true for outsourcing, especially overseas. So we'll start with some simple, like, practical things here is that we recommend onlinejobs.ph for Filipino virtual assistants. If you're going to use some sort of virtual assistant, which means they're doing like data entries type tasks that are like very easy. And that's the beautiful part about the internet today is that so much software has allowed things to become so much easier that you don't need a crazy programmer and like 
tech wizard to get things done that anybody who has a computer, internet connection, and like basic navigation skills of the internet can learn to do some of the stuff that you need them to do, right? Yeah, and I, I mean, online jobs, when we started hiring our team, you just, you knew what you wanted. And so you just put those things down on online jobs. And we had somebody in 24 hours. We've had... Um, Which kind of goes against our hire fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So maybe the, maybe not <laughs> I the think best today, example. <laughs> I know. I think today I'm, I'm a lot better yeah, at it. I've like seen what I want, but like, especially if this is your first time. So what I want to do is we'll tell you how we did that. Okay. But first of all, onlinejobs.ph, Filipino virtual assistants for general task management type things, data entry and step-by-step -step stuff. They're really good. They're honest, they're loyal, they're hardworking, they're dedicated, and they're inexpensive. Mm -hmm. So we have a virtual assistant named one of them. This is actually Phoebe's own virtual assistant. Like she only works with Phoebe and no one else. What's her name, Phoebe? Princess Pellegrino. Yes. The best name ever. We just try and think <laughs> of excuses to use, say her name <laughs> yeah. whenever possible. Princess Pellegrino, we found her on online jobs. And yes, I did find her in 24 hours. But so, I think the other one we've like we've tried to kind of hire before that. And I know that you had like passed that on to me and just said, put together a process. And and for me, I hadn't done it before. And it was really difficult to know what questions I was supposed to be asking and mm. what you know, what 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 was I actually looking for? And that I think is really important when it comes to if you're using, you know, a platform like onlinejobs.ph or any other one, I know I've personally used Upwork and found some yeah. really good people on there, but it did, it took some time of like going through and the interview process and all of that. So I want to, I want to give that to people, some of the steps that we use yeah. to hire people slowly. I also want to give a distinction on Upwork. I use Upwork when I'm looking for skill specific people, video editors, After Effects animators, graphic designers. We found someone to do keynote slides. We mm -hmm. use Upwork, but general like step-by-step -step work, onlinejobs.ph. So let's give a quick rundown of how I find someone, the application process, because if you have a bad employee, someone who's no good, it's your fault because you let them into your company. You didn't have a good enough screening process. So let's improve the screening process. Step number one for hiring effectively is the job post. And you want to be clear about what it is that you're looking for. What are the type of things that they'll be doing? and et cetera. Now, what I do is I give a call to action to tell them to do something. I want to do a Skype interview with them, but I'm not just going to give my Skype email or Skype username on the uh, application. So what I do is I say, reply to this job post and attach an image of like a cute cat or something very unique. So I know that they're paying attention, that they follow directions. And then when all the replies come back, I see which ones have the picture of the cat or that, you know, you have them do some silly assignment that's like kind of hard for them to read. So, you know, I said something like put in the third line, like my mom loves strawberries or something like really random. And it was just so funny to like see. Did people, I mean, did people do it? Very few. Yes. Yeah. But, but, but it, I've had people tell me from the get go, like, how do you choose someone? I got 60 applicants in an hour. That's how you mm -hmm. narrow it down to seven out of 60. Who's actually paying attention? Who's actually reading what you're, yeah. you know, cause people just copy and paste that stuff all the Abs time. Absolutely. So step one is that, and that creates a filter right there. And then step number two is what I do is I reply back to them. As soon as I see their email and I say, hey, I'm on Skype right now. Here's my Skype address. Come hit me up. And I ask them a bunch of questions. We won't go too deep into the questions, but I start with basic ones like, can I see previous work experience? What are your skills? Do you have an internet connection? Do you have another job? Do you work from home or an internet cafe? Do you have access to the internet all the time? What are the type of things you enjoy doing? How long have you been doing this for? Like basic questions. Now, the other great tip, and I got this great advice when asking questions, are doing scenario based questions like what would you do in this instance and let them like reply back to you like let's say an assignment is late you know you're going to be late on an assignment it's due tomorrow and it's going to take you another three days what do you do see how they reply see what they come up with and i think those are really important there but we could spend an entire episode just talking about how to qualify your applicants the final piece of this is you don't just hire them you put them on a seven day probationary period you say, I'm going to try you out for seven days. At the end of the seven days, we'll talk and see what we're going to do for 30 days. That way you're not locked into the first person that you say yes to. And I have at least three people that I've interviewed before I select one, except princess. She was a, like, <laughs> she's a rare gem. I feel is. like, <laughs> I mean, anybody named princess yeah, is already a win in my book. <laughs> She's going to be listening to this being like, oh, they love me. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of other people are going to listen and change their name to princess. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's look at secret magic step number four for failing miserably at outsourcing. So again, what not to do. Get one person to do it all. Yes. 
I love when I see that happen. Like <laughs> I'm going to hire one virtual assistant and I just want them to do everything. I want them to manage my WordPress. I want them to be my graphic designer. Oh, can you edit my videos, please? Can you do my SEO? Can you do my social media? And will you write my emails to my <laughs> list? Thanks. Tell me when it's done. <laughs> so we're really adamant that you want to find someone that has a strength, a sweet spot, and put them in that area. So a lot of what Princess Pellegrino does is what? What are some of the things that she does? A lot of like tech stuff. So she, I mean, basic like WordPress. So I don't have her write anything. So I still keep control of that. But she will post the blog post. She will create all the emails inside of Infusionsoft. She will post inside the Facebook group for me. So those are primarily, I would say, well, the best things that she does for me that I really (laughs) like to get off my plate. But I think that a lot of times when you are trying to get one person to do it all, you know, you're a lot of people just assume that you're going to get a new you, you know, a cheaper version of you. And so they're going to write everything, as you said, and write, edit, whatever. And it just doesn't seem to make sense. So I think when people start to get one person or just get a team of people, actually, you know, they are intimidated by having a whole, you know, going from one person from you doing it all to all of a sudden you have five people or you have three people. You and know, we don't recommend that. Yeah, like, exactly. If this is, you've never done this before. Start with one exactly. baby steps. Yeah. But so, don't have them do everything. Right. So what would you think would be the best way? Like if no, someone's never outsourced before and they went and said, OK, I'm going to go apply and find someone today. What do you think? What are the type of first things they should identify to outsource? How do they go about choosing what they should let go of? So actually, my friend, Jessica Ray, she told me, I don't know where she got it from, but she has a Trello board that she uses. And every day, when whenever she has a task that either she doesn't enjoy doing, so I think it's what I don't enjoy doing, what I can't do, and what I don't want to do. And she puts that in a board. And so every day, she, you know, she just keeps it open as a tab on her Chrome, and she'll just add it in there. So then you can go back and have a look at all the things that yeah, you don't want to do, you can't do, or, you know, and that you now have a list of different tasks that you want your VA to do. So I think that's a good way to kind of get started. Yeah. My list keeps growing Mm -hmm. all the things I don't want to do. (laughs) Like it's like, all right, I've done this before. I don't need to do it again. Someone else can do it from now on. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be everything, but if princess Mm -hmm. was also doing graphic design and Facebook advertising or something, we'd be like, wait, what are you doing? So if you're trying to find greatness in a virtual assistant, you're going to fail miserably if you're trying to get them to do a ton of things. Get them well, yeah, to focus. They're going to be average at everything mm-hmm. as opposed to really good at something. There's a great book that I absolutely love called The One Minute Manager. It's a great read. It talks about spotting the wins, like looking for the wins in, in someone. And, and that's what you want to do. You, we really want to set them up for success. And the easiest way to set someone up for failure is saying, hey, you got to do, you got to have these 10 skills to work for me. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. So don't, don't bother. Okay. So let's look at super secret ninja (laughs) step number five to failing at at outsourcing so number five is (laughs) don't bother training them and don't use processes i I think this is a really good one for you (laughs) i don't know how many people i've seen like do you do seo and someone's like the virtual assistant's like yes i do i do i do seo of course they're gonna say yes like you, you know like if i say do you like do you like coming to work on time (laughs) <laughs> yeah. No, I don't. <laughs> you know. <laughs> so so then they bring them on and then they say, "Okay, great. Will you do my SEO and tell me when it's done?" And then and they're like, "They didn't do my SEO." This is I mean, this is crazy. Like I see so many people do that. Like, "Hey, will you do my branding?" Great. Go do my branding mm-hmm. and tell me when it's done. This is a virtual assistant. These aren't these aren't people that own a business. These are employees and empo- like um, remember a time when you had a job. You got hired and you had to get trained. They didn't just 99% of you, they didn't just throw you into something that was really important and say, figure it out. And I don't even know what you, you know, you should be doing. You should figure it out. Like you had to be trained. And so this really stems from such an important concept that was a massive breakthrough for me. It's in a book called it's scrum, but it's the art of doing twice the work in half the time mm-hmm. by yeah. Jeff Sutherland. And it's this whole concept about Blaming the process, not the employee. Look to the environment, not the employee. So if you have a virtual assistant right now, this is again, we told you we were going to get to this one and it's not working. They're not getting stuff done. They're not communicating. They're not getting back to you. And it's our natural human tendency to sit there and go, they suck. They're awful. They're 
deceitful. They're bad. Instead, realize that the environment affects so much of our behavior. This is why companies are huge on what's called company culture. That's mm-hmm. like not just a cool, trendy word. Like it, there's a reason, there's a science behind that. And even with an employee of one virtually on the other side of the world, you need to have some sort of environment that sets them up for success. Are you setting up your team, your virtual assistants, to make it a win, to make it easy for them to be a success? And a lot of times we're not. And we can look to that process to see why not. So we want to encourage you to blame the process, not the person first. And guess who's in charge of the process? You are. Yeah. Do you even have a process? Right. This is a big one for me to learn. And even with Princess and with a few other people that we have just on our team in general, when something doesn't happen, you know, you need to look at what, like, why didn't that happen? Take a step back. Don't, you know, take the people out of it. And that's something Mm -hmm. that... I think our team does really well is just trying to figure out, okay, so she didn't submit something on time. Like what actually happened? What went into that beforehand that allowed her not to succeed? So, or is the reason she didn't succeed? Because ultimately that's what we want to do is build everyone up for success. So So what's something that she does really well for you that you're like always happy with? She is really good about, we have a few monthly tasks. So I would say about posting in the Facebook groups. So that is something that she does really well for me. And every time, well, we use sweet process. Mm -hmm. And so what I've asked her to do now is every time I ask her to do a new task because she is quite new. She puts the whole process into sweet process. So if ever a day came when Princess Pellegrino could not work for us, we have that saved somewhere so someone else could just kind of step into her role. So I think that... How did you, know, you How did you train her to get consistently post in the in the group? Like, what was it that you had to tell her? Well, so what I did is I created a, a video for her. So I actually went in and did it. And I created a video where I was talking directly to her and just showing her exactly what to do. And then she went in and did the first one and just asked me, you know, she would either not, not, not so much the Facebook ones, but maybe like a blog post, she'd save it as a draft. And I would just go in and just have a look. And even now I'm still doing that just to make sure that she does have it right. Cause I think she is a little bit nervous to like post things on her own, mm-hmm. but yeah, eventually we'll get to a point where she can just kind of do all of this herself. So the, the fun, funny thing is, is that when we talk about this is like, Oh, it's the process. Like mm-hmm. you don't have a process or it's not a good enough process. It doesn't mean you have to be like, Oh my gosh, how do I create processes? And right. it's like, you just created a video saying, this is how I do it. Every Tuesday I post this and it looks like this and it mm-hmm. adds this and I do it like that. Now you do it, please. Yeah. And then you never have to do it again. And she knows exactly what to do. And even if it's not published, it's like, oh, I'm going to check it and approve it. And eventually she can just do it on her own. That's not hard to do. Right. That's just making a little screencast video. We use Jing or Snagit to just record it, send it off to them, and boom. Now, sweet process. You mentioned sweet process. I love sweet process. So what is sweet process? Sweetprocess.com. What is that? And how are you using that in the the business? So sweet process is a way for you to create a process map. So you have different steps, and it just allows you to use screenshots of of different parts of the website, and you can just plug them right in. It's super simple, really well, just really easy to use, to be honest. So we use it, as I was saying, just to allow her to create this process map where now we can always have it. And so what I'll do is when she creates the process map, I actually go back and look. And if there's something that maybe she's forgetting or, you know, she left off it, that's probably something that I left off and I forgot to tell her. So. Ah, look at that. Look at you practicing <laughs> that it's this process. It's probably me in the process, not her. Right. So this is so this is so big. And a lot of this breakthrough, I mean, like the fact that Phoebe's on my team and she's using sweet process is so massive because it's something that I started using and now I'm empowering my team to use it themselves. And now my team is empowering their own virtual assistants to use it. And it's like, holy cow. So this all started when about a year ago, almost exactly my fiance got me a a present for my birthday. Do you know what that present was? No. She got me Legos. (laughs) <laughs> Legos. How old are you? <laughs> I think I, I, that was when I turned 31. It was, le- it's right there. It's right next to you. Oh yeah. 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 It's a Lego VW, VW bus. Right. So I'm a big, like old Volkswagen fan. And so she got me the Lego bus and we sat in my house for five hours and we built, it's like 5,000 piece Lego bus. <laughs> 
She's just looking I don't at even me. know what to say to that. Okay, so I asked a few months later, we were having some breakdowns in business where like a lot of mistakes were being made, a lot of things were being forgotten. A lot of like me having a hard time letting go and delegating of like higher tasks. And I went to Chelsea, my fiance, and I said, Do you remember when we built that Lego school bus? She's like, Oh yeah, of course. I was like, How like at what percentage perfection did we build it? And she's like, What do you mean? I'm like, was it good? And she's like, Yeah. I was like, Was it like the picture on the box? She's like, Yeah. So we agreed it was like to ninety nine percent perfection. It's like we hadn't built Lego since we were twelve, or maybe for me, like since I was like twenty five. Maybe like a year, right? But her for her, like a little kid, and we're not engineers, we're not builders and all that type of stuff. How did we take this thing out of a box and within five hours assemble this entire thing to literally perfection? And the answer was we had a step by step instruction manual. Every page, I mean this thing was thick. It was like a hundred pages. That's why it took so long. It's so many pieces. This thing is huge. But every page was one step at a time. Put this brick on top of that. Connect this to this. And there was a visual. And it was very simple. And I said, I need to create the Lego instruction manual for my business. And that's where Sweet Process really came in. So let me ask you this now. So that's kind of what this, how it started, right? And I think you guys all need to do that as well. So, and this is, should be deserving of its own episode. I mean, it's so funny because like, as we start this podcast, it's like, oh, this is its own episode, right. That's its own, which is good. That's a good sign. That means we got a lot of episodes coming. We're not going to run out of topics anytime soon. So you created a webinar before and go to webinar. Yes. Yeah. How many steps do you think it takes to create a webinar? Like if I said, go create a webinar. Yeah. I would probably in my head be like, um, oh, like five. Yeah. It's 15. Yeah. Right. It's always so many more. It's so many think. more than you think. And so if you're just like, tell someone like, Hey, go create a webinar for me, set up a webinar event inside GoToWebinar. You think that they would figure out how to do it. And you don't realize that we collapse a lot of the steps because they're so quick for us. And so what we did recently, one of the things we did with Sweet Process is we created what I call the ultimate webinar process map. So when we create a webinar, here's some of the stuff that we do. Again, this is its own episode, but we create the event and go to webinar. We create a registration page and lead pages. We create a thank you page and lead pages. We connect it with Infusionsoft. We create an entire follow-up email reminder series. And then we connect it with a piece of software called Plus This that sends out segmenting tags and stuff like that. So there's like all these steps. Took me two weeks to create this whole thing, but now we give this process map to someone on the team. Hey, go follow this process. By the end of the day, they have it completely done to perfection, and that's that's the goal. That's what that's what we've been after. We created a process that that sets up whoever is going to do that, whether it's a virtual assistant in the Philippines, whether it's Phoebe, they're going to succeed at it. They're going to win. And that's what we want. That's what's important. Yeah, I think it's the short term sacrifice for long term gain. Totally. You know, and I know that when we when I created processes, I you know, it's not an enjoyable thing to be taking screenshots of everything, but you it just takes have a long to, time too. it does. And you have, just have to keep in mind what the purpose of it is. And if somebody in the Philippines who doesn't who's never touched that piece of software, if they can do it, then it's good. If for some reason you leave out a certain, you know, we, we do this all the time. So, you know, I think that we kind of simplify everything. And in mm-hmm. our heads, we're like, oh, yeah, well, of course you would do this. And of course you would click there and add this piece of Don't code. Don't you know text. that? Yeah, exactly. Duh. But, <laughs> yeah. but then I think this has like really opened my eyes to like, oh, maybe this isn't just self-explanatory. Maybe people don't know this. Mm-hmm. So breaking it out. Yeah, I would think it would be five steps. Yeah. But so this one was huge, and I hope yeah. you guys really got that. I want to move on. We got two more for you. How to fail miserably to outsourcing. Number six. Don't trust them. Oh, my goodness. You, you just can't trust anybody, you know? And and that's always the surest way to get stuff done is when you let them know you don't trust them, too. <laughs> yeah. There is. There's a lot of skepticism that people have, and there's, like, this lot of, like, micro-micromanaging. That's like, well, worst. let me see exactly. Wait a second. It really took you two hours. You should have done that in an hour and a half. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, let's split hairs and give them, not give them that extra dollar fifty here. Yeah. And the thing is, is, like, if you've ever had a job and you know your boss doesn't trust you... How are, how well are you going to perform? Some of you guys are going, I would earn his trust, (laughs) but most of you are going to be like, I would feel pretty crappy. And after a while I'd be like, screw you. There's nothing I can do to prove that I'm trustworthy. So I always give the benefit of the doubt. In fact, when we do that probationary period for the first seven days, I pay him up front. I show him like, look, I'm putting skin in the game. Here's a hundred dollars, which is like, which is nothing Mm -hmm. to get an entire week of their commitment to you and your business. So for the Filipinos on onlinejobs.ph, trust them. Trust them at least for those seven days. Let them prove that wrong. Let them show you that they're not trustworthy, but, you know, innocent until proven guilty. Exactly. And you've spent $100, you know, in the grand scheme of things, even if they were terrible and they took your money and ran. It's a $100 lesson. Exactly. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So don't go into this with skepticism because it just doesn't help. If, you know, let, let me tell you, let's put the disclaimer in here. We've had virtual assistants in the Philippines rip us off. 
steal thousands of dollars. We had someone who took three thousand dollars from us. Like <laughs> it is a long story, I won't get into it. But it was our fault. We had a crappy process in place for, you know, measuring how much time they spent, what they were getting done, et cetera. And I blame myself for that. Not them. Mm-hmm. You know, they t- they took advantage of a loophole that they discovered. Yeah. Good for them. Mm-hmm. You know, but we got rid of them as soon as we found it. But again, it goes back to the process and the structure. Right. Okay. Let's take a quick look at number seven, how not to outsource. Well, you wouldn't pay them. <laughs> <laughs> Don't pay them. Yeah. You know, they just, they work for Why free. Bother? Obviously this is a no brainer, but we did want to throw in like, cause that becomes the biggest question. Like how do you pay them? What's the best way and stuff like that. So remitly.com, R E M I T L Y.com is a great resource for paying virtual assistants in the Philippines. Easy to set up. They like it. It connects with their bank account and all that good jazz. And then we use paypal.com as well, but they won't like PayPal as much because it takes a little bit out for them. I think well, what I did for one of mine is I just, I paid them over the amount. So whatever the total yes. amount was, you know, I just paid them a little bit You paid bit them more. the difference, yeah. which is only going to be like six to 10 bucks or yeah. something at the most. Toggle, we'll have the link in like the show notes for this as well, but Toggle is a great resource you can use. Time Doctor to have them measure and keep track of their own time. You can pay people part-time. You can say, I want to work 20 hours a week. I want you full-time or you can pay them hourly and you're looking Again, in the in the Philippines, we're looking at about three dollars an hour is pretty standard at this point. You can do more, you can do less, but I like three dollars an hour. And you want to pay every week, at the end of every week. So one of the things that I do is I require all my virtual assistants to send me a payday reminder at the end of the week that has the date, how many hours they worked, and what they worked on. So then I go, go and when I see that email, I go, oh, time to pay them. If they didn't send me that reminder, they don't get paid. And but it's on them, not me. Yeah, I really like that. And I, you know, when we're talking about the trust factor, I don't have, I know Upwork has something where they can take screenshots of their computer every 15 minutes or something. So you can tell what they're actually working on. I don't require that. And also with Princess, I just trust her when it comes to what she did and what she worked on. And the first week, I, first couple of weeks, I had a, a look at just what she did and how long it took her. And there was nothing that, you know, if there was something that, said 15 hours for her to like make a graphic I might be a little bit like "Mm, not sure but everything else you know seems legit and I think they're pretty happy and when you ask them how often do you want to be paid I know that princess was like oh you know anytime whenever you you know whenever is convenient for you but that reminder email for me was really important because I would always forget they're (laughs) never they'll never forget yeah exactly this is how they get paid they'll never forget now on Upwork, it's a little different. We've done, we won't get into this too much, but we do, we've done some software projects and I lost $5,000 to someone. Like literally just like they took it and ran and there was like really nothing I could do. It was like a total bummer and I made a huge mistake. And so, so if you're doing something like a project, so virtual assistant's going to be something you want to work with every week. That's not a project. That's like an employee. But if you're working with like a programmer to get a project done, what I didn't do is I just paid them hourly. And so they just kept showing me like a rough half finished thing. And then as soon as it hit $5,000, they just decided to not work on the project anymore oh. and just left. And there's, I, so I have a half completed piece of software oh, that gosh. he hit a roadblock and then spent all of the rest of his time. Cause I said like, let's keep the budget under 5,000. I'll pay 5,000 to get this done. As soon as he hit 5,000, he's like, I don't want to work on this anymore. I'm done. So that was a bummer. I learned my lesson. Yep. And on Upwork, you can set up a contract with milestones. Mm. So if you're doing something like a software, you create three milestones. Milestone number one is starting of the project. So if it's a $1,000 project, you say you agree to them. Like, okay, $1,000 to create this software, they say, fantastic. So a project like that, it's not hourly. It's based on a set agreed upon price. And so what I do here is I say, milestone number one is to start the project. And I'll give them $333 to start the project. Boom. They get it initially. And then milestone two is I get the first version of the project done and completed and sent to me so I can review it and go through it and make changes. Once I receive it, boom, I give them the second milestone, $333. Now they're at $666. And then the final milestone is upon completion of the project. And then I throw in a bonus on top. If they get in on before my deadline, I give them a bonus. So I'll say like it's another $300 bonus if you get it before this date. So that really incentivizes people to take action. But we did that and it totally saved us both. You got to do that. You got to have those contracts set up. Now that's for projects. That's for software. That's for something bigger. Like if someone's going to build a website for you or build something big like that, you want to set those contracts and milestones up and that's in upwork.com. Okay. Let's recap. I'll have you recap it. 
So we just talked about the seven things to do to fail miserably at outsourcing. Yeah, what what not to do. Right. So now we're going to reverse those just to make it a little bit easier on you and tell you what you should actually do. So number one is to know that other people can do it as well as you can. And even if they can't, you sh- there's probably some stuff that you shouldn't be doing. Right. And it's okay if it's not perfect. Number two is even if you have had or know someone who's had a bad experience with outsourcing, give it another go. Absolutely. Number three is to take your time when hiring and make sure that you are you have a process set up so that you can choose the right person as opposed to the first person. You can fire fast, but don't hire fast. (laughs) Number four is to make sure that you have a few people that can do a specific task as opposed to getting one person to do all of it. And number five is to make sure that you train your people and to use good processes. So we recommended Sweet Process, but also you can use a number of different video trainings or screencast software, whatever you want to do. But just make sure that you train your people. Number six is to trust your employees. So make sure that you are giving them the benefit of the doubt so that they enjoy working for you. And Yeah, yeah get innocent until proven guilty. Exactly. And number seven, just make sure to pay your people. <laughs> pay them on time. Pay them exactly. right. There, I've definitely seen people that ju- they just think like, oh, am I going to get paid? I don't know. And so they don't work. Right. So there you have it. The seven don'ts, the seven do's of outsourcing. We highly recommend it. It's absolutely essential to growing your business. You can't do it all yourself, ladies and gentlemen. So I hope this has inspired someone to go out there, take action, and put out an application on a site like onlinejobs.ph to find that very first or that next virtual assistant. And if you already have a virtual assistant, put some of this into practice, like creating a better process for your team. I'm James Wedmore. I'm Phoebe Morocek. And this is the Mind Your Business podcast. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Are you frustrated that no matter how hard you hustle, no matter how much you get done in a day, you still feel like you have a little results to show for it? Do you feel like you're doing everything right, but there's still something missing? Well, what if there was an easier way? What if your business could be fun, effortless, and profitable? Phoebe and I have put together a free audio MP3 for you, compiling the 77 business affirmations for creating success from the inside out. And we want to give it to you absolutely free. This is your chance to rewire your brain for bigger results in your life and your business. To get instant access absolutely free, simply visit 77affirmations.com. That's the number 77affirmations.com.